metaphysical implications of mystery performance. As I told you already, guys, the first part will be the lecture, the ideas that I want to share with you, and maybe you can receive some type of inspiration or insight. And the second part, which I am very excited to, and in a way is more important than the first part of the lecture, is the questions and conversations and co-creation. That for me is essential. So let's go first with basic definitions, basic concepts in which we can talk about. So because we are talking about the metaphysics of Mr. Performance, I feel that is needed to observe in a more common way what we mean, we mean, of course. So first, metaphysics, as you can see, that's a very common definition. And I love the focus that we observe in this matter, in our role and practice as mystery performer, right? And the title in itself, because we are talking the implications, uh, there is an assumption in there, obviously, if we are not conscious about it, or if we are not the ones that reflect, obviously we know that there's so many type of different paradigms in, in the mystery performers community, magicians, mentalists, and so on. And most of them, the, the more commercial aspect, the more consumerist aspect, most people don't reflect, right? They don't care about these notions of the, deeper possibilities with our art. But I assume that because you are in here and also you're watching this video online on YouTube, you had some interest or at least some curiosity to understand what we mean with the metaphysic implications. So with the concept of metaphysic, as you can see in the definition as well, you can feel that there is more that meets the eye, right? The classic saying in, in English that it's so interesting because in a way aphorism and normal common sense also contain very interesting wisdom and indeed we can recognize that there is a reality beyond the physical and that's basically the, the idea metaphysics right the etymology from greek is like be meta can mean also beyond or uh, extra level right and physics obviously the the world of matter right and and again, the focus for us can be very interesting because mind and matter is a very common dualism in Mr. Performance. So that's metaphysics in a <laughs> short sense. And I put those three concepts as an example. If anyone doesn't grasp the notion of metaphysics and why it is important in this talk and new potential reflections that you may have is because language, creativity, imagination, they are common experiences, right? In this same moment, well, we are using language. Uh, I am using the verbal language and then in the conversation you will use verbal language and uh, as a native Spanish talking person, I had to learn how to talk in English in such a way that I can connect with my friends around the world, right? So we are observing in there a concept of language that obviously idiom is one of aspect, but language is much more. And language is what we can consider or define as a metaphysical concept or metaphysical uh, type of connection or even reality, right? Language in a way can be also be a reality. The second one, creativity right in a way or another we all always feel that we are again in some level creative so in normal common daily activities we can feel that we can experience some creativity or we can be creative and so on so again creativity is another type of metaphysics or another way of metaphysical reality in which yeah creativity is real but where it is right uh, we can maybe point out to our brain or to ourselves, right? The, the Greeks in the past, they observe it as the diamond, right? The kind of outer spirit that told you those secrets, that those new ideas. So we can now understand that these notions, these concepts are real, but not in the normal sense of reality. They're, we can touch language, for example. 
but we can do another things with the language. And the last one, imagination, right? Almost every people had the ability to imagine and some people can't or find difficult to observe images, but imagination is not just about images, of course, it's about the whole potential of different possibilities of stimuli, right? And we will observe as well that imagination works in a great way in mystery performance in various reasons. And I will talk about that in a moment. So another notion that we can observe here before going further into mystery performance that I can assume that in a way you can define, but again, it's important to observe it in a more common way. We can understand and we can validate the notion that you can see in the screen that the mind is not the same as the brain sometimes because we are commonly in a materialistic type of paradigm both in our conversations and in our studies in mystery performance we assume that the mind as a phenomenon occurs in the brain and thanks to new developments in different sciences and in different types of studies we can observe that the mind is not the same at all because the brain is the physical organ, right? And it's very important. And we can understand rationally that, for example, in our right hemisphere, we have our creative and in the left, the rational, so on. But the mind goes beyond that. So we can understand that the mind is the construct that embrace the brain and not in reverse, right? That the mind is the container of these phenomena, or physical phenomena that we said brain, right? So that's another interesting notion. And the second concept that I want to observe in a deeper way, in such a way that we can again reobserve what we do and start to reflect in this metaphysical implication is the concept of mystery, right? And um, if we want to convey a concept that can take both magicians and mentalists and storyteller magicians and bizarre uh, performers and hypnotists, right? And all those types of kind of similar type of art forms, we can use this beautiful concept of mystery performance. But when I start to study this concept and I start to contemplate it, I realized that most people had this reduced notion of mystery in such a way that we can imagine, for example, Sherlock Holmes type of crimes and mystery related like to police dramas and so on, or also a very strange, weird concept that I, <laughs> I found recently that is called the mystery chop, something like that, mystery Klein, right? And again, it's a very <laughs> consumerist way to use the concept of mystery and puts it in a superficial way, right? So for me, mystery is, again, something that is a mystery in itself. Mystery for me is far beyond what we can define. It's maybe what the hermetics calls the all, um, that for some people can mean the divine other. For me, mystery is another name for everything, right? Uh, for the all, for this cosmic unity, right? And, and that's why I feel that our blessed privilege that we have to be a mystery performer in a way is to create a fractal of the mystery with capital letters, right? One way in which we can define it, again, we will fail in defining it, but in one way, is the ontology of existence, right? So we are talking about interesting and deep subjects. And in here, I have a short video and although it's in Spanish, yeah, maybe you know a few words, you can understand. This person, and this is just an interviewer, the, the next person that will reply the answer was, sadly, Humberto Maturana. Humberto Maturana died recently, or in his own words, he ceased to create the autopoietic process. <laughs> and this man was a Chilean biologist and epistemologist. So for me, uh, it has a great impact in my work in all ways. And this interviewer asked some years ago to Humberto Maturana, what is the importance of mystery? And please hear carefully. Yes, the word mystery, for example. Does it resonate? Does it have validity? Yes, of course. 
misterio significa que hay algo que a mí me sorprende y para lo cual no tengo o pienso que nunca o en este momento una explicación. Y puede que ni siquiera busque la explicación de aquello que considero un misterio porque me encanta esa, ¿eh? el estar enfrentado a algo desconocido. Una palabra muy cargada, llena de connotaciones, lo siento. ¿Qué pasa? So, it's highly interesting to observe his definition because obviously he comes from another world that is not common in the mentalism or magic literature, right? He basically says that mystery is not something that we just don't know, but is something that we I decide to keep unknown because it will be always unknown, right? So that's why one of the definitions that we can label in mystery is that is the ontology of existence is from everything that came, right? And Terence McKenna, another great author and philosopher and psychonaut says that mystery is not to be confused with an unsolved problem. A mystery is by its nature mysterious and will not collapse into solution, right? Another way that we can say this is that mystery is not something, it's not just something that we don't know, but maybe something that we will never know. So we have this powerful, powerful possibilities to remind people with what we do, right? The most basic card trick or the most emotional piece of mentalism or maybe a moment of hypnotic trance. We can remind people that mystery is like our natural state of being, right? Uh, so we are not also adding, for example, the concepts of existentialism, right? Why, the why, right? So. I feel that we have a beautiful why with mystery performance. And for me, mystery performance is this kind of beautiful garden. And I take this natural type of analogies and metaphors, uh, not just because I love the tree as a symbol and I use it in very different ways. And, and it, it's a very simple and profound way to understand different things, but also because sometimes in magic, We said that, for example, mentalism is a branch of mind, right? It's, again, and using this concept of branch as an analogy of a tree. And I feel that is, it is highly more detailed and, and descriptive if we understand the garden of mystery performance full with different types of trees, right? And each tree is each one of the mystery performances. In some time ago, I put this kind of meme at Mentoring Center. Uh, and, and in a way, we can observe various types of what we can call mystery performances. And they serve mystery, right? Uh, as the divine other. And I love this, not just with the joking sense, but also because for me, in the mystery performances, I feel that there is no implied metaphysics and that's very strange because everything that we do by nature is very tendent to the metaphysics of life but we are the ones that trivialize that right and Max Maven said that we did beautifully some time ago and I'm sure that most of you know the quote but it says something like that magicians made something very extraordinary that took the most transcendental and the mystery and, and transform it into something trivial, right? So we did through the years a very strange act that I think that we can reverse. We can add the polarity into this dynamic and we can transform our state of the art to new levels. I hope that people and the world needs it. So mystery performance is a reminder of the mysterious nature of existence. And I feel that with each one of the potential styles or genres, or whatever you want to call it, different ways in which we can reach into that state of mystery or the reminder, we can apply as our style, our individual decision sets. For example, in my case, I don't perform magic in the normal sense. I, I restrict myself to create this space of credibility and 
all the things that I care in my own performance, but again, each one of us, of course, is free to do whatever he or she wants in regarding to which types of mystery performance we do. And obviously we know great magicians that they can reach this level of mystery that goes beyond the concept even of magic, right? And if you see, in my own view and in this design of this meme, we can see that mentalism is also a mystery performance. So in a way, the art form is a bridge towards this metaphysical archetype, right? So what is interesting is that with this concept for me in Mr. Performance, we can go beyond the emotional aspect of astonishment or surprise. And this can be a little bit um, kind of difficult or complex to understand, but I feel that although the emotional is of course very important and as I understand it is the third level of our development and, and vibrations, we can go higher, we can go to the spiritual dimension of impact, not just the emotional, because the emotional of course is needed and we can not just perform for the brain, but also for the mind and the soul, of course, right? But I think again, that in order to create a transcendent experience of mystery, we can reach those levels of spiritual impact that again goes beyond the mere emotion of or reaction, right? And this again can sound very challenging in a system and in a space in which the reaction is so important, right? We want to sell the reaction and in every trailer we see the reaction and so on. And of, of course those are marketing tools and but sometimes we forget the potential importance of what we do, right? It's not that we can uh, be the savior or have this grandiloquent type of uh, even egocentric type of path, but in a, in a true way, we don't know the impact that any performance can have, right? And I can assume that each one of you who is live to this video or you that you are watching this video now, maybe you had this memory or this beautiful experience with a participant and this participant was really touched and maybe you don't understand why but now maybe, maybe you can understand why because we can go higher and deeper right so obviously this cave this classic plato's cave the allegory of the cave right and sometimes we forget what is truly important in mystery performance because we focus into the shadows, right? But in reality, we need to go into the esoteric path. And obviously the esoteric path can't be teached truly because it's a personal path, but it's needed. And it's powerful to say that these types of conversation in mystery performance are important. And again, I am thankful for your participation in this online space. And also if you're watching this video, because that means that at least your mind is open to contemplate new ideas. So we can trace our ancestors and grandfathers of mystery performance through various lenses, right? We are observing in here magic and mentalism and all things that basically they manifest in an artistic way the mystery. So we can observe, of course, the work of the shamans and all the important roles of storytelling that they had. And as you may know, the, the beautiful work about various types of chaman and recollecting stories, right? We can see that in several cultures, shamans also had these kind of performers or show business type of art form. Right, and it's very important to, to at least don't negate this root that we have, right? Again, this can sound very grandiloquent or, or disconnected to quote unquote the real world, right? But again, this is not about not being commercial. We can still be interesting to the market, but keeping these values, right? Remember that what we do offers maybe the 
only experience that someone will have with magic or mentalism. So why not do it the best for them? So that's one of the roots. Obviously, the powerful work of parapsychology as uh, science, right? And all the great discoveries and new data that we have in the modern state of art of parapsychology. One funny fact, if you don't know the author at the bottom, he is William James. And William James was both the father of American psychology and also he was the founder of the psychical research. So in the early 20th century, psychology was open to this quote unquote parapsychological exploration of the psychic and the, the deeper metaphysics, right? And obviously spiritualism is a very important movement that also bring the new interest from science to observe how this phenomena happened, right? And again, if we are realistic, most of them, they were charlatanism, right? And they had even a sociological type of function do the, the deceits in the war and so on. But what is interesting is that some of the cases are not charlatans. <laughs> so that's the interesting fact. And some people, even theorize nowadays, and this is very interesting for Mr. Performers, that simulating experience of parapsychological phenomena can catalyze the quote unquote true psychic phenomena. <laughs> and that's very strange. And for those that explore the psychic performance and the psychic entertainment, and as it's called, you know that some strange things happen sometimes, right? Because maybe it's just about openness. It's just about letting things happen. And when we allow silence to emerge, sounds will come, right? And, and if you know music, and I love music, if you know the work of John Cage, yeah, John Cage, he was an experimental musician and he worked a lot of with silence. And there's a beautiful piece of his that he's called uh, Four Minutes and 33 Seconds, I, I believe so. And if you don't know it, uh, after the video, after the conversation, go and, and listen to that piece. <laughs> so a mystery performer basically can be expressed in this major arcana archetype, right? We are the ones that no matter if we do mentalism or magic or hypnotism or readings or, or anything that you do, we are the archetypical magician, right? And we, as you can see at the top of the magician's head, there is a lemon skate, an infinite sign. And that's the metaphysics of the mystery performance. And sadly, we miss that so much. And we need to be more aware of that and all the potential that we have. And why? Maybe this is one why one of the ways in which I can answer why this extraordinary thing that Max Maven said uh, is true nowadays, right? And if you know uh, Descartes and all the Cartesian dualism and all that, we can also observe in an historical way that this classic discovery of witchcraft book was very similar in time with all the work from Descartes. So we can see historically that the movement of rationalism and the movement of avoiding all these ancient stupid things such as witchcraft and so on, right? The, the work of the shamans and all that magical nonsense was put it away with this type of quote unquote modern thinking. And nowadays, if we observe the community of Mr. Performance, right, the conversations that you can normally read in different places, there is a clear influence in dualism, materialism, and even scientism. And don't get me wrong, I love science, but I don't like scientism. And scientism can be defined as this ideology in which we take the philosophy of science. And that means that if something can't be explained through the 
methodological thinking and the, and the scientific uh, method is not real. And I found that completely absurd, right? Completely absurd because the three concepts that I place at the beginning of this talk, right? Language, creativity, imagination. How can we explain fully and truly those concepts with science? We can't, we can't, right? We can maybe study the brain, right? And I love neuropsychology and all the advancements of observing uh, thing, uh, thoughts and patterns and so on, and it's lovely, but science is a very limited system, very limited. And we can't assume that only the science or the reality that offers science is the only true reality. Because if we think so, I feel that we are losing magic, right? We are losing all the other most important things. So let's be observant about that. And I don't invite everyone to open the paradigm immediately or or without reflection, not at all. It's the contrary. Reflect about this and observe not just your performance life, but also your normal life. What are the things that are truly important, right? What is the physical or what is not physical, right? So I feel that that's a very interesting point to have. So mystery performance is the only art form, sadly, that normally negates the metaphysical essence of the art form, right? It's very strange. And normally, if you ask a magician if he wants to communicate the notion that, quote unquote, he has magic powers or that the experience was done uh, not just by supernatural means. I, I don't mean by this that we need to say that I am a magician or I am a mentalist in the way that I have the powers. Yeah, and obviously, it's not about that. It's that we are negating the experience for people, right? So we can observe, for example, in a magician that a magician doesn't need to allude directly to the notion that he can manage a coin, for example. He does it, right? And he's a magician, ergo he can manage coins, for example. But maybe the important aspect is not that egocentrical notion, it's the ecocentric notion. It's the notion that the experience was magic and if someone asked that person that was magic he will say yes or she will say yes because it's not about that he or she has the magic but the experience was magic and in mentalism for me is the same right if i can't claim something i will not do it so every claim that i express and communicate in my act is completely real i feel it as real and my audience feel it as real for the reason. So this notion I, I talk in the past with this with Kenton, that is very funny that, for example, a mus musician will say, you know, I play music, but I don't observe sound as real, right? It's very weird and, or music in itself, right? If musicians, for example, understand this, what I told moments ago that, that essence of the art form right and some musicians said i do it for the love of music right and if we observe that line what it means right for the love of music or for the love of painting or for the love of sculpture or for the love of theater whatever the art form is right what it truly means and how can we say that same thing in mystery performance right are we performing for the love of mystery hope so right so we can do the difference my friends, if you are live here or you are watching this video on YouTube, mystery performance is the art that serves mystery. And we can create these games, these moments of playful dynamics, these moments in which, yes, we'll be, you will be entertained, but you will not also be entertained. Maybe in a subconscious way, can you feel the difference, right? You, we can create something deeper we can go into deeper aspects and what is great about this is that we don't need to reach those results always right it's not needed 
maybe we will do a very commercial quote unquote act and people will just take it as an entertainment moment and it's fine right and and that's the superficial level sometimes people can feel that if we understand mr performance in this way is very serious and we will be boring right and no not at all not at all in the complete reverse we need to be so enchanting that the superficial is the natural expression of the content right so if my content is important and and has value of course that the superficial aspect would also be relevant and interesting so we can ob observe with all these my friends that all mystery performances contain metaphysical implications and we will observe a few of them first of all the act in itself, any type of demonstration or of any type of mystery performance, not, not any type really, we can do some exception, for example, readings, right? Readings has this different quality. They are not about doing the impossible, but it's about creating another thing, right? But most mystery performances, we are un uniting what is paradoxical, right? We are doing the impossible. How can we do that in all different mystery performances when you create the experience of telepathic connection right telepathy for most people is something that is not possible right or managing a coin or making a car travel and to the pocket so they are events that transcend the physical loss quote unquote so in any type of mystery performance we are embracing this possibility of paradoxical actions, right? Doing the possible, which is very interesting. A magician, classic notion, showing the hat empty and then producing a rabbit or anything, right? Something from nothing. If you know philosophy, you know that this is one of the big questions. How is something rather than nothing and all those type of questions. And this is a very clear, very interesting metaphysical implication of magic in this case, right? If you are a magician and you you make this act, you create it for people with deeper reflection and not just like a gag, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. no, like something important, people will feel it as important. That's one of the most powerful tools in, for mystery performers. If you think about it, what you put in your mind, what you embrace in a way, what you believe, but it's not about belief, it's about experience. What you experience in your mind, your audience will also experience it. So if you take this, again, common act of magic, but do it in an important way, maybe you can enrich your impact. If you know about Hinduism, you can observe that beautiful graphic and remember Maya, right? All physical reality is an illusion and that's a common implied metaphysics of Mr. Performance. And maybe most magicians they don't know about what I am talking about, the, the concept of Maya, right? The illusions and or reality as an illusion, but they do a coin marriage, right? And in, a, in an implied way, they say that, for example, as Pink Floyd said, that money is a gas, right? So that, again, is a reading, metaphysical reading of an, of an act. And we can do that with everything that we do. And sometimes we don't even realize that we are communicating for example this one or this one or all the ones that i will share with you but we are doing it and what is beautiful and magical is that if we had that intention in our mind that intention will also guide us to create deeper experiences for people and i place this tree related to this notion of all physical reality solution because if you know my work you know the tree model and the by real concepts in a reality on the outer reality and so on. And in this basic observation of the tree with the roots, the trunk, the foliage and the fruits, we can also observe these four different levels of reality, right? The physical, the mental, the emotional and the spiritual. And I feel that Mr. Performance goes into this, right? And obviously we can through Mr. Performance communicate that all physical reality is illusion because this is just the first level, right? It's real, but it's not the only reality. And the mental can be related to what we talked moments ago about language, creativity, imagination, right? And obviously the emotionals about the emotions and so on. So 
we can observe that interesting application of this notion that all is solution with the physical level. Another type of aphorism, common phrase that we can see, especially with magicians doing manipulation, right? And again, manipulation, that concept alone has metaphysical implications, right? That someone is manipulating reality, very interesting. So the more, the more you look, the less you see. It's a very interesting phrase that we can analyze and observe again the metaphysical implications. And if you do any type of manipulation with cards or any act in which you can say that line, you can now reflect, okay, what it means. What, because it sounds like a contradiction, but it feels like truth. So again, that's your work. I just inspire you to observe those ideas. Other concept that I found kind of very funny, the squaring the circle. That is a very hermetic concept that uh, I am sure that most magicians and performers that use the, that classic tool, they don't know about that, right? So again, it's very weird that we negate the origin <laughs> of our art form. And in there, you can see a beautiful quote, but by the great Carl Gustav Jung, right? About the squaring the circle as the archetype of wholeness, right? Beautiful. So if we go a little bit to hypnosis, right? Because I, I feel that mystery, uh, hypnosis is also another way in which we can create a mystery performance, right? And we can observe one of the metaphysical implications of hypnosis has that everything is a trance or everything as a trance. That's beautiful, right? Because if you know hypnosis, you know that we can reach very interesting experiences that for people are true magic, right? In a way, hypnosis is true magic, is going into the unconscious of the participant and use communication and influence and suggestion in such a way that you can truly design a momentary reality for someone, right? And for example, you saw some time ago, or maybe you do it, that someone can place the hand on a table and then using an hypnotic trance, that hand is completely glued, right? And the person can't move the hand because it's completely stuck. And that experience for the person in the trance is completely real. That's the fascinating thing, that hypnosis is a way to create a beautiful mystery performance with harmony between both realities. And that is also touched in readings, for example, right? And, and what I mean by harmony, harmony in both realities is that we don't need to camouflage any type of technique or any type of secret myth method, right? In a way, in a very simplistic way, in hypnosis and in readings, what you do is what they experience, right? We don't need, again, to camouflage any type of action. And I love hypnosis for that as well. And one of the concepts that I touch in the, the work that I recently just uh, refer about the both realities by real also talks about this concept of real illusions that complements very well with what I, we talked moments ago, that although we can understand that everything is illusion, at the same time, everything is real because it feels real, right? And this is a very interesting concept that you can study and observe why I put it in there. So real illusions, the inexperience is real. Obviously, other implication, metaphysical implication that is related, kind of more related with mentalism, is this beautiful line that comes obviously from this great work in Hermetics, the Kibalion. Personally, I love this book. It's very, very powerful in, in the correct mind. And that's part of the first principle. If you know the first principle of mentalism, the all is mind, the universe is mental. And if we think about it, in mentalism, that's the essential metaphysical implication. In all mentalism, we can imply that reality is 
a mind-based phenomenon. The universe is mental, right? And another observation that we can do in the metaphysical implications, particularly with mentalism, is using this classic, what I call the phenomenological typology of mentalism, that several performance uh, refer in various ways and we can observe, for example, Max Maven uh, using it is in his red book, I, I, I remember, but we can also observe it in this book, right? Uh, a book that is not about mentalism, it's about the parapsychological studies, that they also use this same four typology, telepathy, clairvoyance, precognition, and psychokinesis. And each one of the phenomena in mentalism had of course, various types of metaphysical implications, but I will share with you just one. For example, telepathy. If we ask someone, or as you can see, if we Google what is telepathy, most images are related or either in the brain or face to face, right? Or just about the waves and so on, right? And although that is not completely incorrect, I feel that we can understand it in a better way. Telepathy, if we observe the etymology from the Greek, means feeling at a distance. And I love that. Feeling at a distance. So although, again, that's not bad because the mind is part, sorry, the brain is part of the mind, is not the only part. And especially if we understand that we are talking about feelings. And in a dual way, we can understand that feelings are not part of the brain, but the heart or the soul, right? So in telepathy, we can observe that it's very important to observe the metaphysical implication of connection, right? And the feeling of connection, not just the thinking and the, the focusing and the kind of the angry face with the hands on the on the head like having a migraine right that's not about telepathy right and we can observe that this is kind of the stereotype and we can break that stereotype when we understand that for example telepathy can mean or means originally feeling at a distance clairvoyance is the second one and it's very interesting and i feel that one of the best ways to show this is this beautiful painting by magrette that as a matter of fact, it's called clairvoyance. And again, it's a beautiful understanding of observing what can't be seen, right? So that's one of the implications in itself, but there's another one. For example, the notion that we can feel with our mind. And in a way, the mind, and listen this carefully, this is kind of a strange, but, I think that if you put reflection into this, you can see what I mean. The mind is the sixth sense. And this work of different clear senses, what the state of the art of parapsychology said, right? Normally in mentalism or in performance, we just observe clairvoyance as the viewing thing, but we can observe other types, right? Clear audience, clear cognizance, clear sentience, right? So we can feel with our mind. Our mind is not just what we are thinking or the idea or the image that I am seeing, it's much more. So in a way, the mind is a meta sense, not just the sixth sense or the seventh sense, if you want, but a sense that allows us to have different senses, right? It's strange, but it can be done if you explore it. Precognition, the third phenomenon of mentalism. And I feel that one of the great metaphysical implications of precognition is this one, the nature of time. And for that, you can read different works and in there you can see how we can understand time as a loop, right? The concept of retrocession, right? How the future affects the past it is beautiful and strange, right? So every time, if we think about it, every time that we do a prediction piece, we are in a way exploring and contemplating and playing with the nature of time because a prediction basically breaks the laws of time that of course that you can know what will happen because it doesn't happen yet, right? 
that's the basic implication of any prediction. That's why for people, they are so amazing and impossible. And we create this paradox of doing the impossible because people understand that we can't know the future, but we are doing it. So again, we are playing with the nature of time. So if you're interested, you can study that work and many others that you can find. And finally, psychokinesis, right? And that's a fantastic example by the great Yuri, right? The power of the mind, the men's metals and so on. And if we think about it, any type of psychokinetic act metaphorizes this concept that the mind is over matter. And why I put that symbol for those that know symbolism, they will understand, but basically in a very reduced way, the pentacle, the upright pentacle means that the mind is over matter. That's why if we embed it, we get the notion that matter is over mind, right? And materialism and so on. So any type of psychokinetic act in which you alter matter through the act of mind alone without uh, physical contact or maybe with physical contact, but in the case of spoon bending, uh, an impossible result, right? The classic psychokinetic cl climax with the metal that is bent, we are declaring this interesting metaphysical notion that mind is over matter. And this interesting phrase is also used by various types of fakir, right? In an implicit way, they always, because they push the limits of the body, they are showing that uh, focus of the mind, tranquility of the spirit and meditation and so on can had a superior agency that matter, right? And that's beautiful. So the invitation for us, for me, for you, for everyone, is to observe our performances and observe the metaphysical implications. What are you already communicating? Because this is not a concept that you need to apply into. It's not something that you need to add. It's something that you need to observe. It's already there. And obviously this is just the beginning of exploration. We can go even, even deeper, but I don't want to talk anymore. So now my friends, I will first of all say thanks to, obviously for you, but also for people that are watching this video on YouTube. Had a beautiful day and enjoy.